Last week, I was preparing images for the NYSA's Fancy Lift presentation. I noticed some images that could benefit from a quick cleanup with Stereo Photo Maker's clone tool, so I thought I'd make a quick video showing how to use this powerful feature. The video is posted to YouTube, so you can step through the process on your own. Along the way, I got some feedback from David Starkman and redid the video to incorporate some of his tips. Be sure to check out his excellent write-up at the link in the description. And thanks to Jim McManus at lifeis3d.com for allowing me to use his images as examples. Please note this video assumes you already have some familiarity with Stereo Photo Maker, or SPM. If you don't have SPM, I'll provide a download link in the description. As noted earlier, there's a few images that we think we can clean up with the clone tool. So in this image, if I zoom in to the very top, you see that there's this funny little orb floating here. That could either be a visitor from the spirit realm, but more probably it's a speck of dust caught by one of the lenses. Let's switch to the side-by-side -side view for more information. Okay, so here you can see that it's probably a speck of dust in the right lens. We can try fixing this by copying the tree bark from the left side over to the right side. And this can be accomplished using the clone tool. The clone tool is always sitting there waiting to be used if you're in the side-by-side -side or in the anaglyph views and a few others. It does not work in the interlaced or quick adjustment view. Okay, since we're in side by side, it'll work here. So if I hold down shift, then notice that I get this brush. And what that's gonna do is let me copy information over from the left image to the right. And that's why it's so crucial to get the alignment proper. I can see I got a bit of a dark part of the tree. I probably want to copy a little bit more of this part over here. So let me just adjust the window slightly. Let's give it a little bit more. Okay, and then we're just gonna, I'm holding shift and I'm just clicking a little bit. And notice I've cleaned up that little bit. And if I zoom back out, if you're really looking, you can see it, but I think we've done a pretty good job. I'll pop back to show you the anaglyph view. And you can see that we've gotten rid of that little speck. Just to show you a little bit more information about the clone tool, if I go up to edit and I go down to clone brush setting all the way at the bottom, or it's control N, if I click on that, that brings up the setting that I had. If I hold down shift, I have this little dot and I can change the shape or I can change the size or the edge, much like in other image manipulation programs like GIMP or Photoshop. One thing we can't forget to do is adjust the window back to where we want it. So I could switch the easy adjustment view, but I'll just do it in anaglyph. And since I know I'm going to be presenting these side by side for 3D TVs, I'll probably break the window a tiny bit and I'll just align on the body of the guitar. You can use this technique for things that have moved due to a missync like a flag in the background or clouds, or you can possibly remove things that are far in the distance that have too much divergence. Keep in mind that whenever you clone from one side to the other, you're gonna flatten the image in that spot. So it should be used sparingly in a place that the viewer won't normally be looking for depth, like in the tree in this picture. It's also worth noting that I like to use the clone tool if needed at the end of my image preparation process. This would be after the image has been aligned, color adjusted, cropped, etc. This way, if the clone tool doesn't give us pleasing results, we can just use the image as is or do advanced manipulation over in Photoshop or GIMP. And the two images that I demonstrate today have already gone through the preparation process and are otherwise ready for presentation. So let's look at our next image. So in this image, we can see in the upper left there is a little light that is in one eye and not the other. So if I switch to my easy adjustment view, I can see it's in one eye and not the other. And I'm gonna to need to fix that. Now the difference here is, whereas before our problem was on the right-hand side, now our problem is on the left-hand side. And we said that the way the clone tool works is it copies the pixels from the left to the right. So if we just use the clone tool as is, if we switch over to the side-by-side -side mode, if we hold down shift and we, right, we're gonna click on that, it's gonna bring that light in to the right-hand side. 
That's probably not what we want. Even though it's okay to have a flat light at his elbow, it's probably better to make both sides black and not draw attention away from the guitarist. So let's undo using Control z Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the images with the X key, and then I'm going to clone from the left to the right this time, right, pretty quick, and then we're going to hit X to flip it back. And now we've got a nice image, it's cleaned up nicely, and in anaglyph. You'll find that you probably won't use the clone tool very often, not only sometimes it comes in handy, so you might need to do a little bit of trial and error each time you use it. Good luck, and stay tuned for more adventures in Stereo Photo Maker. <laughs>